If you're a BMW fan, you know that the M6 has been on hiatus for two years, and this is the all-new 2012 BMW M6. It appears to be worth waiting for, because instead of the old V10 engine under the hood, we now get a twin-turbo V8, putting out 560 horsepower and over 500 pound-feet of torque, mated to BMW's seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, of course. That's good enough to take this 4,500 pound rag top, yes, 4,500 pounds from zero to 60 in under 4.2 seconds. Let's hop in and take a look. Here's our obligatory under the hood engine shot. We'll take off this little cover, which is really, wow, really toasty hot. So you can see the top of this engine. Again, this is a twin turbo V8, 560 horsepower, 500 pounds feet of torque. And an interesting thing with these BMW engines is that the turbos are here in the valley of the V and the intakes are off to the side. Well, we may have 560 horsepower underneath the hood and a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Everything in the M6 is big, big and luxurious and very nicely upholstered. We have this lovely stitch dash. We have very supportive, very large front seats. You can easily be a large person and fit in the six series very comfortably. These are not your, you know, uh, Mercedes C coupe, uh, very highly bolstered, very tiny front seats that you'd have to be a swizzle stick to fit in. These are for normal sized people. Uh, you know, we get very nice headrests here, this sort of airline style butterfly headrest a very large center console. Everything in this car is big and luxurious, as I would almost expect a Mercedes luxury convertible to be. In many ways, BMW is the new Mercedes. You take a look at the new Mercedes SL and you compare it to the M6, and honestly, the M6 is the more comfortable, more luxurious ride. Even though this M6 is a large convertible, that doesn't really translate into large amounts of rear room. Instead, we have a very large hood and a very large trunk, you know, for a convertible, that is. This front seat's adjusted for me at six feet tall. I can't actually fit my feet in the footwells here, uh, but if I did push the front seat up as far as was comfortable, you can actually fit another one of me in the rear seat. And there is enough headroom, even when the top is up, to actually have a short drive to lunch or, you know, maybe a half hour trip somewhere with four people in the uh, M6. That's actually saying something because you really couldn't fit anybody in the back seat of a Jaguar XK, you know, or the XKRS or the SL because it doesn't have back seats. Because the 6 Series is so large, it translates into a lot of cargo room here in the trunk, a little bit more than you'd think. This is the largest carry-on bag that you can carry on a domestic flight. And as you can see, if we push that all the way to the back of the trunk, you could actually fit about four of those in the trunk of this 6 Series convertible. That really is very good. If you need more cargo room, you can actually lift this little divider into place, locking it and, uh, of course, preventing you from lowering the top. But you gain about four inches of trunk space. This means it is now time to find out how well a journalist fits in the trunk. Let's close this lid and find out. Well, fortunately, the emergency opening handle works well. If they were small, you probably could fit two journalists in here as well. As I was saying before, the BMW M6 is a fairly heavy convertible. It weighs just over 4,500 pounds dry, and if you had a 180 pound driver and some luggage and some gas and possibly a, you know, a light passenger, you're, you're right up there at around 5,000 pounds, which is about the same as a Range Rover empty. So keeping that in mind, it's actually absolutely astonishing how well this car handles. And I'm really not just talking about handling well for a 5,000 pound car. This car handles really well for just about any car. Now that being said, the Jaguar XKR and XKRS handle way, way better than this. And that's primarily because they're over 500 pounds lighter. And a lot of that weight is in the nose. You know, the M6 is a fairly heavy car all the way around. It's a steel vehicle rather than an aluminum vehicle like the Jaguar is. And that really does show out here on these windy Northern California mountain roads. I'm gonna be full of contradictions here, however, because while the Jaguar XKR and XKRS handle better, out on these windy mountain roads, I would actually rather have the M6 over the Jaguar. And that's really taking into account the fact that the Jaguar handles better and sounds better, frankly, on these roads. Jaguar's five liter V8, especially that supercharged monster they have under the hood, just sounds like sex when you're going. I mean, it's, it's just raw, it's raunchy, it's, it's just absolutely intoxicating. 
And really the M6 doesn't sound that extraordinary with those turbos in the way of the exhaust, but the rest of the car is just so much better. You know, we have all the electronic gadgets and gizmos you could ever desire. You can adjust your suspension, you can adjust your steering force, you can adjust the way that your engine behaves, you can adjust how fast the uh, transmission changes gears and uh, you know, how it behaves in its automatic mode. You can change uh, your stability control, whether you want a little bit of assist, whether you want it to save your bacon all the time, or whether you want to just let it, uh, you know, have the car let you run into a tree. Uh, I mean, it's actually amazing the variety of the options that you can select on this vehicle. And that's not even taking into account this really trick dual zone climate control system that has not just two temperature zones, but two completely different air boxes and two different blower motors so that I can have my side uh, on you know a low blower with heat and my passenger can have their side on cool with the blower on maximum. Absolutely mind-boggling the number of luxury options that are in this vehicle. And combined with that is a ride that actually is extremely good. I really didn't like previous generations of the BMW M5 and M3 and, and the M6, you know, for that matter, because they were just too harsh for me. There was this trade-off, you know, you, you bought something that was $100,000 but it was so stiff it knocked your teeth out. And the M6 just isn't like that anymore. I mean, sure, you can put this little suspension into Sport Plus mode and get some really seriously hard suspension, uh, but even still, it doesn't get unsettled over these potholes. Everything in this vehicle just feels really, really well put together. <laughs> you know, is just absolutely intoxicating on these windy mountain roads and I'm gonna put it in its uh, most sedate driving mode now but the reason that it's intoxicating of course is that this thing weighs 4,500 pounds but we can still scoot to 60 in a measured 3.75 seconds which is absolutely positively incredible especially considering that there still is a hint of turbo lag with this twin turbo setup but it's not the absolute power that I find so intoxicating about the M6. It's the mix of power, the mix of luxury, comfort, and technology that actually makes the M6 probably one of the most perfect luxury GTs in the market. You know, you don't just get 560 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque and a snazzy dual-clutch transmission. You also get things like cruise control and night vision, automatic high beams, uh, lane departure warning, we get uh, a adjustable suspension that actually is fairly com compliant and fairly comfortable even on these potholed Northern California roads. You know, we get uh, uh, steering that's easy to use, easy to drive. It's not overly heavy, so it it that's not tiring to drive. We get, uh, you know, these anti-fatigue front seats, which feel like they're slowly groping your bottom, but really do help keep you from getting fatigued on long car trips. This is a 560 horsepower, under four seconds to 60 car that is something you could actually drive every day and, and not just drive short distances every day, but you could actually take this on car trips from San Francisco to Los Angeles and be in this car for eight hours and have it be an absolutely enjoyable experience. Now, that being said, there are better handling cars out there. If I were to choose a car that was to only be driven on the track or only be driven on windy mountain roads when I was absolutely flooring it around everywhere, I would actually take the Jaguar XKRS. Uh, you know, it, it's a much better handling vehicle. It sounds way better than an M6. The exhaust note on Jaguar's 5-liter supercharged V8 is absolutely perfection. Uh, if I were after a car that was more engaging to drive, it would probably be something like a Cadillac CTS-V with the manual transmission or a Nissan GTR because they're just absolutely fun to drive and the GTR sticks to the road like glue. You know, the Cadillac CTS-V Coupe is probably a better handling vehicle as well. However, every time I drive a CTS-V, I always feel like the car is plotting to kill me and not kill me in some sort of grand Poirot-esque fashion. It's gonna be some dirty affair, you know, some back alley stabbing or something like that. And the M6 doesn't even feel like it's plotting to kill me. I, I mean, it's not even trying to kill me in a, fashion, in a fancy way like the Jaguar XKRS. It just does what I want it to do. This thing is just so much fun on these windy mountain roads like this. 
if you're after the ultimate in handling and the ultimate in, in traction, then you would just drive right by the BMW dealer, stop at the Nissan dealer, pick up a GTR and have done with it. But if you're after something that's luxurious and sporty and can accelerate from zero to 60 in 3.75 seconds, yep, you heard that right, three and three quarter seconds, then this is your vehicle. BMW claims 4.2 seconds to 60, but as we all know, they tend to underestimate. But if I'm perfectly honest, if it were me, and if it were my $100,000 I was gonna spend on a luxury convertible, I would probably buy the M6. Don't tell Jaguar, I still love an XKR. And, and it does sound better than the M6. The Jaguar's five liter V8 just is absolutely incredible and it does handle better than the M6, but the complete picture is what the M6 is all about. It's all the electronic gadgets and gizmos, it's the incredible handling, it's the absolutely mind boggling acceleration, all wrapped in that package together that's very unique for, for anybody actually. BMW is really the only manufacturer that, that can even approach this. Um, if you look at some of the competition, the Cadillac CTSV has a fairly low rent interior, fairly lackluster infotainment options. The Jaguar sounds incredible, uh, has a good name, a good pedigree, handles well, but the infotainment, you know, it, it really sucks. And there really aren't as many gadgets or gizmos available in the XKR as there are in the M6. And the new Mercedes SL, well, it still has Mercedes Command in it, and that should be all I have to say. So. If you're gonna go out and spend about $120,000 on your next luxury convertible, definitely put the M6 at the top of your short list. I wouldn't cross off the Jaguar XKR because if you're actually after something that sounds like sex, goes like stink, and carves corners really well, then it's probably your vehicle of choice. But if you're looking at something that handles almost as well, goes faster, and has all the electronic gadgets and gizmos you could ever want, then the BMW M6 is an absolutely solid choice. I'm Alex Ice with TruthAboutCars.com, and that's been our quick take at the 2012 BMW M6. Check out the TruthAboutCars.com for news, reviews, and of course the full review on the 2012 BMW M6 coming up soon.